Okay, thank you. So we welcome all of you to this Pulse live lecture series. We are live direct from Davao City. Uh, before we start, we'll have, have some introductions. Your resource person is Manuel Tibot, the Dean of the Ateneo of the Davao University College of Law. I'm the professor teaching taxation in the law school. I'll teach I teaching tax review, tax one and tax two. And I've been teaching this subject uh, for quite a time now. Um, before we begin, we'll, let's have some uh, preliminaries welcoming our law students, our viewers to this lecture series. To our graduates of this school year who will be preparing for the bar exams which will be reset until 2021. So welcome all law students and uh, as well as our law deans, members of the faculty doing this lecture. So we welcome all of you. Uh, we know that it has been quite a time that we are in quarantine. So we have this uh, community quarantine and a lockdown. It has been about uh, two months. And then um, the schools are off, classes are off. So many of us or many of the, especially our law students are who are at home or have been stranded at their respective boarding houses or dorms. No? So, malaki yung may mga time na nawala. No? So, PALS came out with this uh, arrangement of having a lecture series. No? So, I'd like to thank PALS, the Philippine Association of Law Schools, the Board of Trustees, for coming up with this lecture series. No? Uh, we have started uh, in Metro Manila. So, nagbiyahe na itong lecture series natin. No? So, it started in Metro Manila. So, you have there, uh, nandun sila Dean Abad, si Ada, then you have Dean Nilo Divina, and then Sol Mawis. Then, nagbiyahe ito to Visayas. No? And you have uh, Dean Joan Largo of the University of San Carlos. Then, after that, nagbiyahe na ngayon sa Mindanao. So last week, you have then Z uh, of MSU. So today, we are in Davao City live. So nagyahin na tayo sa buong Pilipinas ang ating live lecture series. Now, um, before I will proceed, itong tax lecture series no, uh, will not be done only by me. Meron Merong follow-up uh, lecture pa rin on another topic on taxation. We will announce this later on. Now for today, our topic is for tax appeals and the taxpayers' remedies. So ito ang ating magiging topic for today. And this topic will cut across no? practically uh, almost all our tax laws. No? So, babiyahe din ito from you have the NIRC, then babiyahe ito doon sa Tariff and Customs Code, then lilipat na naman doon sa uh, local tax and real property tax. No? Then you have the Tariff and Customs Code, including the, the new law now, the Customs Modernization and Tariff Act or the CMPA. I hope you could hear me clear. I, my audio is correct and I could be viewed as well as my slides. No? So yung topic natin ngayon uh, is about the jurisdiction of the Court of Tax Appeals and the taxpayers' remedies. So dahan-dahan lang ho tayo no? so, so that uh, others, uh, yung iba hahabol, would able to catch up. Maraming salamat for this uh, taking time for this lecture series. So we begin. Huh? So the CTA 
was enacted under RA 1125. This was way back in 1954. Later on, may mga amendments ito, pero yung significant amendments came out only about more than 40 years. No? It was only in 2004 where there was a restructuring of the entire organization of the CPA or the Court of Tax Appeals under RA 9282. So dito nakakaroon ng restructuring. Kasi nung under its original charter, under the 1954 law of RA 1125, the Court of Tax Appeals was just an equivalent of then the RTC or yung dating CFI or the Court of First Instance. Pero nung nagkaroon na ng substantial restructuring of the court, under RA 9282, hindi na siya equivalent sa RTC. Naging equivalent na siya sa Court of Appeals. No? Such that the all tax cases now, no? whether emanating from our national laws or even from our local taxation, no? and uh, initially heard under an administrative process by our respective revenue collection agents, for the local revenue offices under the local government code. Lahat ho niyan, all this will go to the CTA. And then from the CTA, it will go to the Supreme Court. Wala na hong dadaan sa Court of Appeals. Itong amendment naman under RA 9503, which came in after four years from 2004 in 2008, considering the surge in the tax cases, dinagdagan ho ng kongreso yung composition yung mga tauhan doon sa CTA. So they added uh, more justices to the CA to the CTA. So yung objectives. So what were the, what are the objectives in the creation of the Court of Tax Appeals, no? The objectives are to entrust tax cases to a specialized court composed of men technically qualified in the field of taxation and to develop expertise on the subject. Second, to expedite the disposition of tax cases, hasten collection of taxes and provide and speed adequate and speedy remedy to the taxpayers. So with this, uh, you have the objectives no, of the CTA. Okay. Now, a, bit, a brief background in the creation of the CTA. So you have this in the enactment uh, in 1954, RA 1125, creating the CTA, not as another superior administrative agency, as was its predecessor, kasi yung dati niyan was the Board of Tax Appeals. No? But the, cre the CTA created then in 1954 became part of the judicial system, which will have exclusive jurisdiction to act on appeals from the decisions of the CIR, no? yung, yung collector of internal revenue noon, no? the commissioner of customs, and then the local board of assessment appeals. So under RA 1125, RA 1125 transferred to the CTA jurisdiction over all matters involving assessments that were previously previously cognizable by the RTC. CTA was then at the same footing or level as the CFI or now the RTC. So in 2004, you have the RA 9282, which expanded the jurisdiction of the CTA and elevated its rank to the level of a collegiate court with special jurisdiction. The law provides that the CTA shall be of the same level as the Court of Appeals and possesses all the inherent powers of a court of justice. So this is the basis why all tax cases and all remedies relative to any tax case or related to a tax case should pass and should be brought to the CTA. Okay. Now, as, it, as to its composition, the CTA has nine justices. It has a presiding justice and eight associate justices. CTA, as I have mentioned, shall be the same level 
as the CA. So the CTA may sit and back or in three divisions. Each division consisting of three justices. For purposes of a quorum, an end bank may have a, a, may have five justices to have a quorum. And for a division, it will have a quorum, quorum of two justices. So ito yung madugo. No? Ito yung important uh, part in our study of the CTA together with the taxpayers' revenues, the jurisdiction. So as it is now currently structured, the CTA now has exercises two powers. One, the exclusive appellate jurisdiction, and second, exclusive original jurisdiction. So it's exclusive appellate jurisdiction to review by appeal practically all decisions of all tax cases from our different revenue collection agencies, whether from the NIRC, from the Tariff and Customs Code, from the Local Government Code. Lahat dyan dadaan sa CTA in the exercise of its appellate. Now, what was added is this new feature in the structure of the CTA, now having exclusive original jurisdiction. There are only two items where the CTA has exclusive original jurisdiction. One involving criminal offenses, and second, tax collection cases on final and executive assessments. But there is an amount required for purposes na pwede niyong iakyat sa CTA where the CTA has exclusive original jurisdiction. It is required that the principal amount of taxes and fees, exclusive or excluding charges and fees, should be, the claim should be 1 million or more. So any criminal offenses or a tax collection case where the amount involved is 1 million or more will be brought to the CTA in the exercise of its exclusive original jurisdiction. So, dalawa hong itong powers, as we mentioned, the exclusive appellate jurisdiction to review by appeal, and second, the exclusive original jurisdiction. So, himayin natin, we go to this one by one. So, yung una, the CTA exercising exclusive appellate jurisdiction to review by appeal. One, you have the decisions of the Commissioner of Internal Revenue in cases involving disputed assessments, refunds of internal revenue taxes, fees, or other charges, penalties in relation thereto, or other matters arising under the NIRC or other laws administered by the BIR. The CTA within which this uh, case will be part is with the CTA division. Okay? So we will dissect this appellate jurisdiction of the CIR. One, it involves disputed assessments. No? The NIRC involved here is section 228 of the NIRC. No? So Yung matter that will be brought to the CPA in the exercise of its appellate jurisdiction is one that involves disputed assessments, meaning it is an assessment which has been challenged, which has been protested or otherwise disputed. So ano hong pinagmula nito? Okay? This starts with the filing of the return. So upon the filing of your tax return, the return will now be subject to what we call an assessment. You have section 203 of the NIRC which provides for the period of the assessment. And generally, you have three years from the last day prescribed by law to make an assessment. So my three-year period for MBIR to file that assessment. So what happens during that three-year period? So your returns will not only be examined or investigated. Your business records, likewise, will be included in the course of the investigation. Your financial statements. That is to prove whether you filed, the, the, you filed and paid 
no? the correct facts. So dadaan ho yan sa assessment. The reason why we make an assessment because most or all of the taxes under the NIRC are self-assessing. So kung self-assessing yan, then that assessment will now be subject to an assessment by the government kung tama ba yung penile nyo at binayaran. So yan yung iimbestigahan, i-review, at i-examine ng BIR. Okay. So what happens during the assessment? So the BIR, upon finding of a deficiency, will send a notice of informal conference. So may preliminary finding sila, i-inform kayo, and then you're given an opportunity to rebut or challenge the findings. Now, the taxpayer is given an option whether he would ignore it or rebut or controvert the findings. Otherwise, if he chooses or opts to ignore it, then what will happen is that may bagong another notice will be sent by the BIR. This time, the pre-assessment notice or the PAN. So you have the preliminary assessment notice or the PAN, which will not, which will now be sent by the BIR after the notice of informal conference. Now, if that PAN is still ignored, then what will happen now is that the BIR will send now a final assessment notice or the PAN together with the final letter of the matter. This time, delicado na ito. So this would now be fatal in the hands of the taxpayer. So if, because if the taxpayer fails to protest the assessment or challenge the final assessment notice, then the assessment becomes final. The taxpayer here is given 30 days from receipt to protest the assessment. Now, there are two forms of protest under the NIRC. One, if the taxpayer may protest by way of reconsideration or by way of reinvestigation. The taxpayer is given that option. Now, if he needs more time in the course of the protest because he has to gather more documents, then it would be advisable that the protest would be by way of reinvestigation. Now, if the mode of protest is by way of reinvestigation, then another period will be given to the taxpayer. He's given a period of 60 days from the protest to file all relevant and supporting documents. So in the hands now of the BIR, there is now the protest either by way of reconsideration or reinvestigation with the filing of additional documents not to support the reinvestigation. So in the hands of the BIR now or the CIR, the CIR will now decide. The, the CIR is given or the Commissioner of Internal Revenue, which we call the CIR, has 180 days from the recon or reconsideration or from their investigation after the submission of documents. Now, in the hands of the CIR now, he may either grant the protest. If he grants the protest, then the remedy stops. Because the taxpayer was given the had a favorable remedy. Now, what happens if there is a denial? If the protest is denied, then this now becomes what we call a disputed assessment. Then the remedy now, because there was a denial on his protest, then the disputed assessment now is appealed to the CPA division. The taxpayer is given 30 days from his seat to appeal to the CPA. Now, Remember that the BIR or the CIR is given 180 days to decide. Now, what happens if there is no decision within the 180-day period? Pwede mag-antay. Yes, the taxpayer could wait for the decision even beyond the 180-day period. Now, in this case, in the event there is no decision within 180 days, there are two options. One, you may wait for the decision, and it, in case of a denial, then you go to the CPA. Now, in the event that there is no decision, and or they have what we call an inaction on the part of the CIR, then the taxpayer is also given an option to appeal to the CPA division within 30 days from the lapse of the 180-day period to decide. So in the hands now of the CPA, 
itong in action pwede mo ba yang babawiin then you tell the court I'll, i i change my mind antayin ko na lang yung 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 decision ng commissioner no hindi na yan pwede that is not allowed and that is prohibited once you appeal to the CTA by reason of the inaction, then you have to proceed with that remedy. Hindi na pwede yung babawiin. Okay? So, in the hands now of the CIR deciding, you may deny the protest, you appeal to the CTA, or if there is inaction, then you are given 30 days to appeal to the CTA from the lapse of the 180-day period to decide, or wait for the decision of the CIR. And in case of a denial, then you go now to the CTA. Okay. Let's proceed further. So, sa kamay ngayon ng CTA, you have, it is filed with the CTA division. Then it is, uh, the CTA division will decide. Then if it is adverse to the taxpayer, before the taxpayer would go to the CTA and bank, mag-MR muna siya. No? The period is the same as under our regular rules, 15 days. If the MR is denied, then you go now to the CTA and bank. Then if the end bank still decides against the taxpayer, mag-MR ka muna before you go to the Supreme Court. If the MR is denied, then you now go to the Supreme Court. Okay. Now, when the assessment eventually becomes final and executory, then you have the collection proceedings. No? So the collection may either be administrative or judicial. So yan, no? that is the jurisdiction of the CTA on the disputed assessments decided by the Commissioner of Internal Revenue. Then another one is plain for This is also one of those things which the Commissioner will decide. You have section 229 of the NIRC on the matters claiming on the claim for refund. Now remember under section 229, the claim for refund should be filed within two years from payment or from the actual filing of the return. Now, what is required here is that both the administrative and the judicial claim should fall within the two-year period from payment or from the filing of the actual return. Unlike the remedy sabat, no? we will we will discuss later. Okay? So, take note that both administrative, will ibig sabihin yung administrative claim nandoon na pinapile natin sa BIR or the CIR. No? And then, when the CIR will deny or decide against the taxpayer on your refund claim, then you go now to the CTA division. Now, it is required that from the filing of your claim for refund administratively to the CIR until it reaches to the CTA wherein the administrative action is now converted into a judicial claim, both administrative and the judicial claim should be within the two-year period from payment. Okay? So that is very important. So in the claim for refund, it begins with the payment of the tax or, the filing of, or from the filing of the return. Then the taxpayer notices that the, ta the taxes were erroneously or illegally paid. So he files a claim for refund. He may ask for a refund or by or an issuance of a tax credit certificate. So if a file yan doon sa CIR. Now the CIR now will decide. If there is a decision within the two-year period and it is against the taxpayer, then the appeal is to the CTA division. And take note that when you bring it to the CTA, it should also be within the two-year period. Now, in the hands now, let's say, of the CIR, you are waiting for the decision of the CIR, the commissioner. And the two-year period is about to set in. Do not wait for the two-year period to lapse. Within reasonable time, appeal now to the CTA division. Because your claim for refund in the hands of the CIR, which is treated as an inaction, will be treated now as an equivalent to a denial then you should bring now the appeal to the CTA. So in the claim for refund, you have the action filed with the CIR. In case there is a denial, you bring it to the CTA division. 
if there is a decision against the taxpayer, you bring you file an MR before going to the CTA and bank. Then you, there is a denial of the MR, go to the CTA and bank. There is a decision of the end bank against still the taxpayer. Mag MR ka muna. If your MR is denied, then you go now to the Supreme Court. So you have this flow of the remedies of the taxpayer. Okay. Another uh, claim no, is the refund claim on VAT. No? In particular, the zero-rated taxpayers. Now, remember that in the VAT refund claim, you have Section 112. So there are two things here that we would like to explain. One, the refund claim before train, which is before 2018, and the refund claim under train, you know, under RA 10963. Now, in the refund claim before train, you file the refund claim with the CIR okay, within two years from the close of the taxable quarter when sales were made. And the CIR has 120 days to decide. Now, if there is no decision within 120 days, then you are given 30 days to go now to the CPA division from the lapse of the 120-day period to decide. So you have that, uh, you have encountered this in the jurisprudence that the 120 plus 30 rule is mandatory. Now, what is important here is that the administrative claim is filed within two years, unlike in Section 229, where both the administrative and the judicial claim should be within the two-year period. In the VAT claim for the zero-rated taxpayers, yung two-year period is only required for the admin claim. No? Yung judicial claim pwede na yan outside of the two-year period kasi nakapile ka na ng admin during the two-year period. So, in the hands now of the CIR, in case of a denial, you appeal now to the CPA division. And then from there, it is appealed to the CTA and bank and then to the Supreme Court. Of course, don't forget the MRs in between no? when there is uh, adverse decision against the taxpayer. Okay. Now, under train, no? under train, under RA 10963, the period to, that you have still the same period within which to file the claim. Two years pa rin, yung admin claim to file the, the administrative claim for refund within two years after the close of the taxable quarter. So you file that with the CIR. Now this time and period with the period within which the CIR will decide is now 90 days. Unlike that, 120 days. Now, so you have 90 days. Now in the one in the in the previous remedy where the BIR has 120 days to decide, that is mandatory, no? Because if there is no decision then that will be treated as inaction. Wala nang waiting period doon. No? Okay. Now, under RA 10963, the BIR or the CIR has 90 days to decide. Now, what happens if there is no decision? Then you have to wait. Okay? Under the uh, under train ngayon. No? So if there is a decision during the 90-day period to decide, then in the case of a denial, then you go now to the CPA division and file your appeal. Now, if there is no decision within that 90-day period, then you have to wait. No? Then, But this is without prejudice to the sanction under Section 269 of the NIRC against the BIR official. The denial should state the legal and factual basis. No? So, going back to the flow of the remedies, the refund claim is filed with the CIR and then if there is a denial, you go now to the CTA division, then it brought to the CTA and bank, and then to the Supreme Court. Again, in between, don't forget the filing of the motion for reconsideration of the MR, when it is now brought for judicial review. Okay. Now, then you have the last part, other matters. Other matters under the NIRC or other laws administered by the BIR. No? So this is now an umbrella or shotgun provision that all tax matters under the NIRC or other laws administered by the BIR 
outside disputed assessments or claim for refunds should be the decision of the commissioner should be appealed to the CPA. Example of this are tax rulings or opinions of the CII. So when a taxpayer is confronted with the tax problem, he may ask for a ruling or an opinion from the BIR. You know? So he writes to the commissioner about his tax query, and then the commissioner will give his ruling or an opinion. If the taxpayer receives an adverse opinion or ruling from the CIR on tax matters under the NIRC or laws administered by the BIR, the ruling is appealable to the CPA. The CPA has the appellate jurisdiction. So you file that first with the CPA division and then bring it to the CPA and bank if it's still adverse to the taxpayer and then finally to the Supreme Court. Second, so yun yung una, no? the decisions of the Commissioner of Internal Revenue. Second, in actions, no? there are, we mentioned this a while ago, there are uh, during the course of the proceedings, whether in the disputed assessments or in the refund claim, where the commissioner will not act on your assessments when you protest it, or will not act on your claim for refund. So we call this in actions. No? In actions by the commissioner of internal revenue in cases involving disputed assessments, refunds of internal revenue taxes, fees or other charges, penalties in relation thereto, or other matters arising under the NIRC or other laws administered by the BIR, where the NIRC provides a specific period of action, and then there is no action on the part of the commissioner, then it will be treated as a denial. Then you appeal now to the CPA division. So we explained that a while ago, that in the case of disputed assessments, if there is an action wherein the BIR will or the commissioner will is unable to decide within the 180-day period, and there is no decision, then you can treat that as an inaction and bring it to the CPA. Or in the case of the refund claims, when the two-year period is about to prescribe and the BIR or the CIR has not acted on your claim for refund, then do not wait for the two-year period to lapse. Within reasonable time, you bring now the appeal to the CPA division. And this will have the CTA having the CTA having now exclusive appellate jurisdiction on the inactions of the Commissioner of Internal Revenue. And this goes to all to all other tax cases under the NIRC or other laws administered by the BIR, where there is a specific period within which to act. And then that will be treated as a denial and it will be now appealable to the CTA division. So from the CTA division, as we mentioned again, it will be brought to the end bank in case of an adverse decision. And if it is still an adverse decision from the CTA and bank, then you bring it finally to the Supreme Court. Again, without uh, with the with the MRs no, in between these judicial remedies. Third. You have now decisions, orders, or resolutions of the regional trial court in local tax cases originally decided or resolved by them in the exercise of their original or appellate jurisdiction. So this is another exclusive appellate jurisdiction of the CTA in local tax cases. So here, when the decision of the RTC is in the exercise of its original jurisdiction, you bring it to the city, the appeal to the CTA is brought to the CTA division. When the decision of the RTC in the local tax cases is in the exercise of its appellate jurisdiction, you bring it to the CTA, but not to the division. You bring it to the CTA and bank. You know? So the RTC deciding in its uh, appellate jurisdiction, you bring it to the CTA and bank. 
when the CTA decides in its original jurisdiction, you bring it to the CTA commission. Okay? So we will explain this. So this involves now the local tax cases under the local government code, particularly local taxation and real property taxation. So ano itong mga local tax cases? One, you have the issue questioning the legality or the constitutionality of the tax ordinance. Any question on the constitutionality or legality of tax ordinances or revenue measures must be raised on appeal within 30 days from effectivity to the Secretary of Justice, who shall render a decision within 60 days from the date of receipt of the appeal. Now, such appeal shall, have the, shall not have the effect of suspending the effectivity of the ordinance and the accrual and payment of the tax, fee or charge levied the deal. Finally, that within 30 days after the receipt of the decision or the lapse of the 60-day period without the secretary acting upon the appeal, the agreed party may file an appropriate proceedings with the court of competent jurisdiction. So you have that in section 187 of the local government code. So in other words, on matters involving the or issue on the constitutionality or legality of the ordinance, the remedy of the taxpayer is to appeal or question the local tax ordinance before the DOJ. So you bring that to the DOJ within 30 days from the effectivity thereof. Now, in the hands now of the Secretary of Justice, he shall render a decision from the receipt of the appeal. Now, remember, pending the appeal before the DOJ, this will not suspend the effectivity of the ordinance, including the accrual and payment of the tax. Uh, while pending the, the issue questioning the legality or constitutionality of the ordinance before the DOJ, no? or even in the course of the subsequent remedies that will be pursued by the taxpayer questioning the tax ordinance. So the DOJ, remember, has 60 days to decide. So if there is no decision within that period, within 30 days from receipt of the decision or the lapse of the 60-day period, you go now to the court of competent jurisdiction. Now the court, the local government code does not uh, say anong court, but under our rules of court and then our, our BP 129, the jurisdiction is with the RTC. Because here, the, it is brought to the RTC because this is one which is not subject to a pecuniary estimation, wherein the RTC has jurisdiction. So the, so it is filed with the DOJ. If there is an adverse decision, it is appealed to the RTC. No? It is just a term appealed, but this is an action, no? an original action brought before the RTC because the DOJ has denied your protest or your appeal. Then when the RTC now decides against the taxpayer, the taxpayer should appeal now to the CTA division. And if it's still a denial or adverse to the taxpayer, appeal is brought now to the CTA and bank, and then finally to the Supreme Court. Again, in between the judicial remedies without prejudice of filing the respective motions, the motion for reconsideration. So you have that process on the local tax case involving the legality or constitutionality of the ordinance. Now, another local tax case, protesting an assessment under Section 5 of the Local Government Code. When the local treasurer finds that correct taxes or fees have not been paid, the local treasurer shall issue a notice of assessment stating the nature of the tax fee or charge, the amount of deficiency, surcharges, and penalties. Then within 60 days from receipt of the notice of assessment, the taxpayer shall file a written protest with the local treasurer contesting the assessment. Otherwise, the assessment shall become final and executory. In the hands now of the local treasurer, he shall decide the protest within 60 days in the time of its filing. If the local treasurer finds the protest to be wholly or partly meritorious, then he will issue a cancellation or part 
fully or partially the assessment. Now, however, if the local treasurer finds the assessment to be wholly or partly correct, he shall deny wholly or partly with notice to the taxpayer. The taxpayer shall have 30 days from receipt of the denial of the protest or from the lapse of the 60-day period within which to the appeal to the court of competent jurisdiction. Otherwise, the assessment becomes conclusive and appealable. So sa local taxes, meron rin tayong protesting and assessment which is initiated by your local treasurer. So here you have that notice of assessment. This is now served upon the local taxpayer. So finding that assessment being challenged now by the ta local taxpayer, he shall file the protest to the local treasurer. The local treasurer has to make a decision within 60 days, either to grant the protest or to deny. So if there a protest is granted, then the assessment is cancelled. Now, in what happens in case of a denial? In case there is a denial of the protest, no? and then that is still within the 60-day period, then you have to appeal now to the regular courts. Now, in the event there is an action of the treasurer and the 60-day period has lapsed, then you are given 30 days from the lapse of the 60-day period within which the local treasurer shall decide you have to appeal now to the regular courts. No? So in case of a denial of your protest or in action of the treasurer, the remedy of the taxpayer is to appeal to the regular courts. Ang tanong ngayon is... Which regular courts? Now, the regular court within which you're going to bring up your protest or bring up your appeal will depend on the jurisdictional amount. If the jurisdictional amount of your protest is with the RTC, then you bring it to the RTC. If it is with the MTC, then you bring it to the MTC, the Metropolitan Trial Courts or the Municipal Trial Courts. Now, if the, RT, if the amount belongs to the jurisdiction of the RTC and the RTC decides against the taxpayer, then the appeal of the taxpayer should be brought to the CTA division. So you have here the jurisdiction, the exclusive appellate jurisdiction of the CTA no? on the local tax case involving the assessment. From the decision of the CTA division, if it is still adverse, then you bring it to CTA and bank and then finally to the Supreme Court. Now, if the jurisdictional amount is with the MTC and the MTC decides against the taxpayer, the appeal now is to the RTC. Now, the RTC now decides in its appellate jurisdiction. So when the RTC now decides in its appellate jurisdiction and it is adverse, to the taxpayer, the remedy is still to the CTA because the CTA has the exclusive appellate jurisdiction. Ang tanong is, anong CTA, division or bank? It is now brought to the CTA and bank, not to the division. No? So when the RTC in the local tax case decides in its appellate jurisdiction, the appeal to the CTA is to the CTA and bank not to the division, and then finally to the Supreme Court. Now, you may ask, eh, bakit diretso na sila sa CTA and bank? Bakit hindi dadaan sa division? Because it has passed already through certain judicial stages. No? And if you would pass this tax case to the division, it will just prolong. No? And which will be violative or it will be uh, contravene to that principle that taxes are the lifeblood of government. Kaya bawasan yung uh, kanyang faces so that yung stages of bring it the appeal. No? So when the RTC now decides in its appellate jurisdiction, it is brought to the CTA, which exercises appellate jurisdiction back to the CTA and back. And then finally to the Supreme Court. Okay. Another in the local tax case is claim for refund. So you have section 196 involving claim for refund or tax credit. Now, under section 196 of the local government code, no case or proceeding shall be maintained in any court for the recovery of any tax, fee or charge erroneously or illegally collected until a written claim for refund or credit has been filed with the local treasurer. 
no case or proceeding shall be entertained in any court after the expiration of two years from the date of payment of such tax fee or charge or from the date of the taxpayer's entitled to a refund or credit. So take note that this provision is similar to your section 229 of the uh, NIRC. Under local taxation, when the taxpayer files a claim for refund for erroneously or illegally collected tax, the claim for refund, both the administrative and the judicial claim, should fall within the two-year period from payment. Similar construction to Section 229 of the NIRC. So, hindi na kayo magkalito niyan. No? So, the, so, when you file the admin claim before the local treasurer, and the local treasurer uh, does not act on your claim, and the two-year period is about to prescribe, do not wait for the local treasurer to decide. Baka mapaso. No? Then, within reasonable time, you treat the, the, the decision of the local treasurer as a denial. Then you bring it now to the, to the appropriate court, no? which we will continue. Okay? So, anong court? Okay. So, to the regular courts. No? So, here, to diagram what we have said, you file, the claim is filed with the local treasurer. You have within two years or within two years from payment. Now, so, the claim is filed with the local treasurer. In the hands now of the local treasurer, he may grant the refund, he may deny, or there is inaction in the hands of the treasurer. If, the, if it is you are refunded, then the remedy stops. Now, what happens if there is a denial no? or inaction in the hands of the local treasurer? Then you must appeal to the regular courts before the lapse of the two-year period from payment. So in the event of an inaction, do not wait for the two-year period to prescribe. No? Now, in, if you have a denial and it is still within the two-year period, then you bring now later, if it is a denial, you bring it now to the regular courts. What regular courts? Then depending now again on the jurisdictional amount. No? So if the jurisdictional amount falls within the RTC, then you bring the action to the RTC. Pag sa MTC, yung amount involved falls within the jurisdiction of the MTC, MTC then to, to you bring it to the MTC. Now, the RTC on this play for refund will decide in the case no? in the exercise of its original jurisdiction on the basis of the jurisdictional amount now in the event of the denial on an adverse decision of the claim then the remedy of the taxpayer is to bring it to the cta in the exercise of its appellate jurisdiction it is to the cta division and then if it is still adverse from the cta division you bring it now to the CTA and bank, and then finally to the Supreme Court. Now, if the jurisdictional amount is with the MTC, the MTC now will decide in its original jurisdiction. Now, if it is adverse to the taxpayer, then the decision is appealed to the RTC. The RTC now will decide in its appellate jurisdiction. Now, if it is adverse, then the appeal is still brought to the CTA, and the exercise of its exclusive appellate jurisdiction, but this time to the end bank, to the city and bank. Then, if it's still adverse, then to the Supreme Court. So, yan yung flow ng remedies ng taxpayer. Okay. Now, another, okay, this time, so yun yung mga local tax cases. No? Okay. Now, another jurisdiction, exclusive appellate jurisdiction of the Court of Tax Appeals are decisions of the Commissioner of Customs under the Tariff and Customs Code or currently the Customs Modernization and Tariff Act or the CMTA in cases involving liability for customs duties, fees or other money charges, seizure, detention or release of property affected, fines for features or other penalties in relation thereto or other matters arising under customs laws or other laws administered by the Bureau of Customs. So this pertains to the decisions of the Commissioner of Customs. So the decision here is appealed to the CTA division. So 
we'll discuss this. No? Tumayan natin ito. So what are the decisions before the Commissioner of Customs? One, you have the protest cases. No? The protest cases involve the liability for customs duties. No? It may involve customs valuation, tariff classification, rules of origin. No? You have also seizure and forfeiture cases. No? So in protest cases, remember, the issue is liability for the duties. In seizure and forfeiture cases, the issue involved is the legality or illegality of the importation. Remember that in the seizure and forfeiture cases, the seizure and forfeiture cases are proceedings in REM. Okay? They are directed against the property seized and then eventually forfeited in favor of the government. What are forfeited are not only the imported articles, no? but includes the mode of conveyance, whether it is a vessel, an aircraft, or land transportation, and all other accessories as a result of that violation. No? So all these things will be seized, and then finally forfeited. No? Now, in the event of forfeiture, there will be, if this will be allowed to be sold, all the proceeds of the sale will go, will all go to the government because this is a forfeiture. So in the, when the commissioner of customs now decides on seizure and forfeiture cases, the appeal is to the CTA. Likewise, in protest cases where the commissioner of customs will deny the protest of the taxpayer, then it will still be brought to the CTA in the exercise of its appellate jurisdiction. Now, so aside from the protest cases, you have the seizure and forfeiture, and then you have other matters under the Tariff and Customs Code, or now the Customs Modernization and Tariff Act, or other customs laws. Examples of these are issues on abatement, no? drawbacks, refunds, or markings. So all these are brought, the decision of the Commission of Customs are brought to the CTA. So where does this uh, controversy emanate. Lahat ito magsisimula sa collector of customs or what you call the district collector at the port of entry. So yung protest cases, yung seizure and forfeiture cases, and all other matters, lahat yan, all these cases will emanate before the district collector or the collector of customs. So the district collector now will decide against the taxpayer. Okay? Whether it is a protest case, a seizure or forfeiture case, or other matters under customs laws. So if it is adverse to the importer or, or the taxpayer, then the importer will appeal to the Commissioner of Customs. If the Commissioner of Customs will decide still adverse or against the importer or the taxpayer, then you have now the decision of the Commissioner of Customs, whether in protest, in seizure and forfeiture cases or other matters, it is appealed to the CTA division, which has the exclusive appellate jurisdiction. No? So you have the CTA division. Now, if the CTA division still decides against the taxpayer, okay, the appeal is now to the CTA and bank, no? then eventually to the Supreme Court. Okay. <clears throat> Then, number five, in the exclusive appellate jurisdiction of the CTA, you have decisions of the Central Board of Assessment Appeals in the exercise of its appellate jurisdiction over cases involving the assessment and taxation of real property originally decided by the Provincial or City Board of Assessment Appeals. Now, this time, while, it, while the CTA has exclusive appellate jurisdiction, the CTA, the case, the CTA where these decisions of the CBA will be brought is with the CTA and bank, no? not with the CTA division. Okay. Ano itong mga decisions ng Central Board of Assessment Appeals? Now, most of these are found in the, your real property taxation. No? You have four items here involving this. No? One, protesting assessment of the local treasurer. Okay. Now, the assessment, the protest of the assessment in the hands of the local treasurer 
in your real property tax involves valuation. No? Relative or one that involves the fair market value or what we call the assessed value of the real property. So doon magkakaroon ng controversy between the property owner and the assessor. No? So the in the event that is a controversy on the valuation no, of the properties for purposes of coming up with the fair market value or with the assessed value of the real property, the protest of the, and you want to, to protest the findings of the local assessor, you bring it to the local board of assessment appeals. No? In every city or province, there is the local board of assessment appeals created. So, yung assessment that is protested here has a different interpretation under the NIRC. No? Yung assessment dito is with regard to coming up with a finding on the fair market value and the assessed value of the real property or real property tax purposes. No? So when your local assessor will uh, insist on his findings, your remedy is not to uh, file a motion for reconsideration with the assessor. But your remedy is to file the protest before the local board of assessment appeals. No? So you have that one, protesting the assessment of the local assessor under section 226 of your local government code. Second is protesting a special levy under section 244 of your local government code. What is the special levy? No? Itong special levy is similar to your special assessment. No? These are infrastructure or public works developments introduced by your local government. No? So, yung mga liblib na lugar sa probinsya, sa munisipyo, the LGU would like to introduce a public works project or improvement, lalagyan ng tulay, lalagyan ng karsada. No? So, the local government will spend for that. So, real property owners will be benefited by that infrastructure or public works development. So, to recover that investment made by the LGU, the LGU now will impose what we call a special levy. But this special levy will be imposed only on the real property owners who were benefited by that infrastructure or public works project. So, kung yung real property mo nasa interior na from the highway, then you will you need not be subject to that special levy or special assessment. Only those property owners who will be benefited. So there is a recovery period for that. Now, in the event the special levy is protested, then the appeal is brought to the local board of assessment. Okay? So ito yung remedy. No? Within 60 days from receipt of the assessment, no? real property tax or in the case of special levy, uh, appeal to the local board of assessment appeals. No? That is within 60 days from receipt of the assessment. Within 30 days from receipt of the decision of the local board of assessment appeals, then you appeal now to the central board of assessment appeals of the CBAA. Within 15 days from receipt of the decision of the central board, appeal now to the CPA. No? Appeal by petition for review. Now, within 15 days on receipt of the decision of the CPA, appeal to the Supreme Court. Now, take note that the case where this appeal is brought to the CPA is to the CPA and bank, not to the CPA division. So, when the protest now on the assessment or the protest of the special levy is brought to the local board of assessment appeals and the decision of the local board is adverse to the taxpayer or to the property owner, then you bring it now to the Central Board of Assessment Appeals. From the Central Board of Assessment Appeals, if it is still an adverse decision, you bring it now to the CTA, having exclusive uh, appellate jurisdiction, but to the CTA and bank. And then finally, to the Supreme Court. Okay. Another relative to the decision of the Central Board no? is protesting payment uh, relative to the real property tax. You have this in section 252 of your local government code. Now, in protesting payment, this means that 
the you have no uh, issue relative to the tax declaration made by your local assessor. You bring your tax declaration now to your local treasurer for the computation of your real property tax. No? And in the course of the the computation of your real property tax, you have you bring up an issue or a controversy. No? And then hindi kayo nagkasunod with the local treasurer. Your remedy now in case you will you have disagreements or controversy with the lo local treasurer in the case of real property tax you have to pay under protest no? pay under protest and annotate the protest on your receipts no kasi yung local treasurer mag issue ng resibo na binayaran mo and you indicate that you are paying under protest and annotate that you are paying under protest now within 30 days from payment you now file the protest with the local treasurer the local treasurer now shall decide within 60 days and the local treasurer may grant the protest and then order a refund or apply a tax credit. Now, if the protest is denied or no decision from the local treasurer, no, in case of an inaction, within 60 days on receipt of the denial or the lapse of the period to decide appeal now to the local board of assessment appeals. Within 30 days on receipt of the decision of the local board, Appeal now to the Central Board of Assessment Appeals. And then within 15 days from receipt of the decision of the Central Board, appeal to the CTA. No? CTA here, the CTA and bank. No? And then from the CTA and bank, it is appealed finally to the Supreme Court. So, yung flow ng remedies, you, you, in case of protesting payment, you pay under protest. No? And indicate and annotate in the receipts of your protest then you file the protest with the local treasurer. So there is a decision of the local treasurer. He may grant the protest and will give you a refund for a tax credit. Or he will deny the protest or there is inaction. Okay? If there is a denial or inaction in the hands of the treasurer, then you bring now the appeal to the local board of assessment. Appeals. From the local board, you bring it to the central board and then if it is adverse to the taxpayer or property owner, then you bring it to the CTA, having exclusive appellate jurisdiction, but to the CTA and bank. And then finally, to the Supreme Court. Okay. Then fourth, uh, decisions of the Central Board is now the, uh, relative to the claim for refund or tax credit due to excessive or illegal, illegally or erroneously Paid tax, no? so excessive, illegal, or erroneous, pay, erroneous payment of the real property tax under Section 253 of your local uh, government code. So the remedy here is that the property owner or the local taxpayer files the claim with the local treasurer. Now remember that the taxpayer or the local taxpayer has two years from payment to file the claim. Now the local treasurer shall decide within 60 days which may grant a refund no, or a tax credit or deny. If denied within 60 days from receipt of the assessment, appeal to the local board of assessment appeals. Within 30 days from receipt of the decision of the local board, appeal to the central board of assessment appeals. Within 15 days from receipt of the decision of the central board, you bring now the appeal to the CTA and bank, no, having its exclusive appellate jurisdiction. Again, take note that the period to file the claim is still two years from payment. So in the event of an inaction, do not wait for that period to lapse. You bring it now to the local board of assessment. Appeals. Okay. So the remedy here as charted, you file the refund claim for an erroneous or illegally collected real property tax. It is filed with your local treasurer. Then you have the decision of the local treasurer either to grant a refund or deny or there is inaction. No? So if the refund is gr granted, then the taxpayer will be issued a tax credit certificate or a refund claim. Then in the event there is a denial of the refund or inaction in the hands of the local treasurer, then you should appeal now to the local board of assessment appeals. Then from the local board, bring it to the Central Board of Assessment Appeals, then to the CTA and Bank, and then finally to the Supreme Court. 
So, medyo haba-haba, ano? So, hinga muna, hinga muna. Let's take a deep breath. Okay. Before we proceed. Next, no? Next item, number six. You have decisions of the Secretary of Finance on customs cases elevated to him automatically for review from the decisions of the Commission of Customs which are adverse to government under Section 2315 of the Tariff and Customs Code. This provision now is Section 1128 of the Customs Modernization and Tariff Act. The appeal of the decision of the Secretary of Finance on customs cases elevated to him automatically, automatically for review is brought to the CPA division. Okay. So here you have the decisions of the Department of Finance through the Secretary on customs cases. Ano ba itong mga cases brought to the Secretary of Finance on automatic review? Okay. Under 2315 or now under Section 1128 of the Customs Modernization Act. No? Ito yun sila. Okay. So the provision under the CMPA, which is Section 1128, formerly 2315 of the Tariff and Customs Code, you have there the automatic review by the Secretary of Finance in other cases. No? You'd notice ang haba-haba ng provision. But for purposes of simplicity, ito na ang babasahin nyo lang yung naka-underline. No? So ano yung naka-underline? No? So these cases involves not cases in customs involving protest or forfeiture. No? Ibang mga cases ito. Okay. So here, the commissioner shall automatically review any decision by the district collector that is adverse to government. So in other words, the... The customs case, no, which is neither a protest or for picture, emanated with the district collector. No? The district collector decides against the government. So if the district collector decides against the government, there is an automatic review before the commissioner of customs. No? When no decision is rendered within the prescribed period, or when any decision rendered by the commissioner is adverse to government, then the case will now be brought automatically or elevated for review to the Secretary of Finance. So here you have the customs case before the district collector which who decides adverse to the government. Then there is now an automatic review before the Commissioner of Customs. In the hands of the Commissioner of Customs, the Commissioner still decide against the government. Then if it is against still against the government, then automatic review further to the Secretary of Finance. Ano yung magiging decision ng Secretary of Finance? The decision issued by the Secretary of Finance shall be final upon the Bureau. Okay? Now, this happens only when the decision of the Secretary is still adverse to government. Okay? So when the decision of the Secretary is adverse to the government, then the remedy stops. Tapos na. No? Talo na ang gobyerno. Okay? But what happens when at this time the de decision of the secretary is now adverse to the taxpayer? It's now adverse to the taxpayer. Okay? So the appeal now is to the CTA. Okay? The CTA having exclusive appellate jurisdiction to review by appeal on on decisions of the Secretary of Finance brought before it by way of automatic review. Okay. So we'll dissect. No? You have Section 1128 of the Customs Modernization and Tariff Act. The automatic review by the Secretary of Finance in other cases. So this pertains to cases not involving protest or forfeiture. Ano itong mga cases that are brought here, no? Drawbacks, refunds, or abatement. Ito yung mga klase na not in the nature of protest or forfeiture. No? So let's say when the drawback or a refund claim or abatement is filed and the decision of the collector no? is adverse to government, okay? 
then there will be an automatic review of the decision of the collector to the Commissioner of Customs. Now, the decision of the Commissioner of Customs is still adverse to government, then there will be an automatic review of the decision of the Commissioner of Customs to the Secretary of Finance. If now, if the decision of the Secretary of Finance is still adverse to government, then the remedy stops, maging final against the Bureau, meaning against the Bureau of Customs. Yan yung ibig sabihin ng lot, that provision under Section 1128, that when the decision, that the decision of the Secretary of Finance shall be final to the Bureau. Now, what happens if the decision is adverse to the taxpayer or important? Then this time, papasok na yung appeal to the CTA. So appeal to the CTA division exercising exclusive appellate jurisdiction. Then it is brought to the CTA and bank and it's still adverse then brought finally to the Supreme Court. Now, not mentioned under this jurisdiction no, of the CTA on the decisions of the Secretary of Finance under, under Section 2315 which is now 1128, itong provisions under Section 1127 for formerly 2313. That, is, that will still cover an automatic review in forfeiture cases decided by the Secretary of Finance. While that is not mentioned no, under RA 9282, it is mentioned under uh, Section 1127 of the Customs Modernization and Tariff Act or the former Section 2313 of the Tariff and Customs Code. Ito yung dagdag no? on top of those uh, cases that will be brought to the CTA. It, these are the additional uh, cases decided by the Secretary of Finance. No? This involves automatic review in forfeiture cases. So the commissioner shall automatically review the decision by the district collector adverse to government. So when the district collector now decides uh, on the forfeiture cases adverse to government, there is now an automatic review of the decision of the collector to the commissioner of customs. So in the hands now of the commissioner of customs, when the Commissioner of Customs now will still decide against the government, then there will now be another automatic review before the Secretary of Finance. In the hands now of the Secretary of Finance on the cases brought before it by automatic review because of the earlier adverse decisions against the government, then the Secretary of Finance now will decide. If the decision of the Secretary of Finance is still adverse to government, on the forfeiture cases, then it will be final against the Bureau of Customs. The remedy stops. But if the decision of the Secretary of Finance is now adverse to the importer or to the taxpayer, then the decision is now appealed to the CTA. CTA division having now the exclusive appellate jurisdiction. So, kung himayin natin, ito yung flow ng remedies. So you have the automatic review by the Secretary of Finance in forfeiture cases under Section 1127 of the Customs Modernization and Tariff Act. So the claim on the forfeiture is filed with the district collector. No? The collector's decision is adverse to government. Then there will be an automatic review of the decision of the collector to the commissioner. Then the decision of the commissioner is still adverse to government. Then you have now, again, an automatic review of the decision of the commissioner to the Secretary of Finance. In the hands now of the Secretary of Finance, if the decision is still adverse to government, then it becomes final to the Bureau of Customs. But if the decision is adverse to the taxpayer or to the importer, then the appeal now goes to the CTA. The CTA having exclusive appellate jurisdiction. It is brought first to the CTA division and then to, if it's still adverse to the end bank and then finally 
to the Supreme Court. Okay. Then, another um, jurisdiction of the CTA in the exercise of exclusive appellate jurisdiction, you have number seven. Decisions of the Secretary of Trade and Industry or the DTI in the case of non-agricultural products, commodities or articles, and the decisions of the Secretary of Agriculture, the DA, in the case of agricultural products, commodities or articles involving dumping duty, countervailing duties under Section 301 and 302 of the Tariff and Customs Code, and then the safeguard measures under RA 8800, where either party may appeal the decision to impose or not to impose the duties. So here, the decision of DTI or the decision of the DA is brought to the CTA. Whether the decision of the city of the DTI or the DA, whether to impose or not to impose the affected party will bring the appeal to the CTA division. So, ano itong mga cases? Okay? So, it involves three cases. The dumping duty, the countervailing duty, and the safeguard measure. Okay? So, the issue involved here is whether to impose or not to impose the dumping duty, the countervailing duty, or the safeguard measure. So, ano yung dumping duty? You know, dumping duty is one that is imposed by the uh, DTI in case of um, non-agri products or by the DA in case of agricultural products. You know? and, and a dumping duty is imposed when an imported article is being sold in the, in the Philippines at its uh, less than its normal value. So as a result that it is being sold at less than its normal value in the Philippines, then it would compete or it would endure your locally produced products. So DTI in case of non-agri or the DA in case of agricultural products will impose what we call a dumping duty. Now, what is countervailing? Countervailing duty is one where the imported article enjoys what we call a subsidy or a subvention in the country or production of origin. So, since that imported article enjoys a subsidy or bounty in the country of origin, then when it is brought now to the Philippines, this imported article will now compete with your locally produced products. And as a result, it will now compete or endure your locally produced products. So DTI or the DA, will now recommend the imposition of what we call a countervailing duty to offset that advantage enjoyed by the imported market. So ano ito namang safeguard measure? The safeguard measure is neither a dumping duty or a countervailing. Now, safeguard measure is imposed on imported articles when there is a surging importation of an imported article which does not result to dumping or that imported article does not enjoy a subsidy or bounty where countervailing would come in. So what happens is that there is a surge importation, a surge, an occurrence of a surging importation of this imported article. So DTI or the DA, if it is agricultural DA, DTI kung non-agri, will recommend the imposition of a safeguard measure to protect your locally produced products. An example dito, glass. No? There have been a lot of cases that has been brought up to the Supreme Court on the imposition of a safeguard measure. Because this, this glass products which are imported from, from China or from the other parts here in Asia would compete with your locally produced glass products. So DTI would recommend the imposition of a safeguard measure. Now, the other one, the recent one, you have the rice tarification, tarification law. No? Under the rice tarification law, the DA may recommend the imposition of a safeguard measure. If there is a surging importation of rice, no? 
which will not compete with your local rice producing farmers. So as a result, pamadihado sila. So DA is allowed under the rice tarification law to impose what we call a safeguard measure. So ito yung mga cases. So if DTI or the DA, whether to impose or not to impose a dumping duty, a countervailing duty, or a safeguard measure, the party affected, no, let's say DTI or DA will impose, na i-impose natin yung dumping duty, or impose natin yung countervailing or yung safeguard measure, then the affected party from that decision of the DA or DTI will appeal now to the CTA. The CTA having exclusive appellate jurisdiction. So it is brought to the CTA division and then to the if it's still adverse to the CTA and bank and then finally to the Supreme Court. Or if the DTI or DA will not impose no? then yung meron pa rin uh, party affected kasi hindi nag-impose. No? So the affected uh, local producers will say dapat mag-impose kayo dyan. No? So hindi mag-impose ang DTI or DA then that adverse party or affected party can appeal to the CTA division on that decision. Then from the CTA division, it is appealed to NBank and then to the Supreme Court. Okay? Oh. So we're done with the exclusive appellate jurisdiction of the CTA. Now, However, hindi lang yun yung exclusive appellate. No? May dagdag pa ito which we'll discuss later. Ito yung mga dagdag. No? Una, before we go that, go to that, let's go to the exclusive original. No? So we mentioned that the CTA now has exclusive appellate jurisdiction. And then yung second, exclusive original jurisdiction. What are these cases? One, tax-related criminal offenses. No? So the CTA has exclusive original jurisdiction over all criminal offenses arising from violations of the NIRC or the Tariff and Customs Code, now the CMPA, and other laws administered by the BIR or the Bureau of Customs, where the principal amount of taxes and fees, excluding charges and penalties claimed, is 1 million or more. So saan mo dadalhin? yung uh, criminal case. No? If the criminal case uh, involves a claim for taxes and fees of 1 million pesos or more, the original jurisdiction is to the CTA division. You bring the criminal action. Of course, this will emanate muna before the DOJ. No? We go back to the rules on uh, criminal procedure, there is filing of the criminal complaint before the DOJ. Then the uh, respondent is being made to file his counter affidavit. Then there is a uh, resolution made by the DOJ or the prosecutor's office or whether there is finding of probable cause. No? So if there is a finding of probable cause, then there is a recommendation to find the case. With the recommendation to file the case, and then the claim now for taxes and fees for that violation is 1 million or more, the criminal action is lodged with the CTA. It is to the CTA division. And then, the, in case of an appeal from the, division, from the decision of the division, it is brought to the CTA and bank, and then finally to the Supreme Court. Now, what happens now if there is a finding of probable cause and there is a recommendation to file the criminal action. But the amount involved for taxes and fees is less than 1 million. Okay? Then, the action now is brought before the regular courts. Where the, the, where the principal amount of taxes and fees is less than 1 million or where there is no specified amount claim shall be tried by the regular courts, and the jurisdiction of the CTA shall be appealed. So, yan yung mangyayari. So, here, to make it simple, you have the exclusive appellate jurisdiction in the criminal offenses, on tax-related criminal offenses. So, 
if the amount involved is less than uh, 1 million, the criminal case is brought to the regular courts. Now, in bringing the action, the criminal action to the jurist to the regular courts, the jurisdiction of the RTC or even including venue will be determined on the imposable penalty for that violation. So if the imposable penalty for that tax violation is with the RTC, then the criminal action is filed with the RTC. Of course, together in that RTC, together in the filing of the criminal case with the RTC is the determination of the award for the civil liability to collect the tax, where the amount involved is less than 1 million. Pero kung over 1 million sa CTA, ipapayad yung case. So here, if there is a decision of the RTC, and you say you have a conviction, then the, there is an appeal. The appeal is to the CTA. Then from the CTA, it is brought to the CTA division, and then from the division, it is brought to the CTA and bank. And then finally, to the Supreme Court. So you have now the, the CTA having exclusive appellate jurisdiction on tax uh, tax related criminal offenses. Now, if the the criminal action belongs due to the imposable penalty is with the MPC, then the, the, the criminal case is filed with the MPC. Then it is from that decision of the MPC, it is appealed to the RTC. No? The RTC exercising its appellate jurisdiction. And this time, in case of an appeal, it will be brought to the CTA and bank, no? not anymore to the division. And then finally, to the Supreme Court. Now, another uh, case where the CTA has exclusive original jurisdiction are tax collection cases over final and executory assessments. Now, remember that the government could not collect or impose or initiate collection remedies without a prior assessment, except in the criminal uh, action where it will not require a prior assessment. So before the government could institute collection proceedings or collection remedies, there should be a prior assessment. So in the event now, the assessment becomes final executory, then the government will initiate collection proceedings. So if the amount involved on a final executory assessment involves a collection for taxes and fees, excluding charges, penalties, is 1 million or more the exclusive original jurisdiction to file the tax collection case it's with the CTA division so you bring that action to the CTA division because it is where it has the exclusive regional jurisdiction now from the CTA division in case of an appeal it is brought to the CTA and bank and then finally to the Supreme Court now, what happens if the tax collection cases on a final executory assessment is less than 1 million pesos? Then you bring it to the regular courts depending on the jurisdictional amount. So collection cases where the principal amount of taxes and fees is less than 1 million pesos, then it shall be tried with the MPC and the RTC. So depending now on the jurisdictional amount. So to chart that remedy, you have the exclusive appellate jurisdiction of the CPA on tax collection cases on decisions rendered by the RTC in its appellate in its exclusive jurisdiction and the RTC in its appellate jurisdiction. So you have if the tax collection case and final executory assessments involving an amount of less than one million the jurisdictional amount is with the RTC, then the collection case is filed with the RTC. The RTC now deciding in its regional jurisdiction. Now, in case of an appeal, it is brought to the CTA division, and then from the CTA division, the appeal is lodged to the CTA and bank, and then finally to the Supreme Court. Now, what happens if 
the jurisdictional amount is with the MPC. If the region, if the jurisdictional amount is with the MPC, the MPC now will decide in its regional jurisdiction. Then in case of an appeal, the appeal is to the RTC. The RTC now deciding in its appellate jurisdiction. In case of an appeal from the RTC, then the appeal is to the CTA and bank. Still, the CTA, whether division or end bank, deciding in its exclusive appellate jurisdiction. So from the MTC, it is brought to the RTC, then from the RTC to the CTA and bank, and then finally to the Supreme Court. So to recap what are the cases, therefore, that are brought to the CTA and bank. No? So one, as mentioned under RA 9282, amending the RA 1125, you have decisions, orders, or resolutions of the RTCs in local tax cases decided or resolved by them in the exercise of their appellate jurisdiction. No? Then it is brought to the CTA and bank. Then you have decisions of the Central Board of Assessment Appeals and the exercise of its appellate jurisdiction over cases involving assessment and taxation of real property originally decided by your provincial or city Board of Assessment Appeals. The decision of the Central Board is brought also to the CTA and BAC. Third, you have decisions or orders or resolutions of the CTA division. Obvious naman ito, no? All decisions of the CTA division is brought to the CTA and bank. Ano yung dagdag dito? No? So yung dagdag natin, when you have the criminal tax-related criminal offenses and tax collection cases on final and executory assessments. So you have the decisions of the RTC no? in its appellate jurisdiction in criminal cases. No? Then the uh, the appeal is brought to the CTA and bank. Then you have also the decision of the RTC in its appellate jurisdiction on tax collection cases. The appeal is brought to the CTA and bank. So you have this uh, jurisdiction or the cases that are brought before the CTA and bank. So we are more than half of our discussion. So those are the important points no? relative to the jurisdiction of the Court of Tax Appeals in the exercise of its exclusive appellate and then the CTA exercising its exclusive original. You'd notice that the jurisdiction of the CTA no, will involve now practically all tax cases. Kung saan man nang galing itong mga tax cases, whether from the national agencies or from our uh, local courts in the case of local taxes, or from administrative agencies where the implementation and enforcement of tax laws are involved, all these tax cases are now brought to the CTA. Now, who may appeal? Now, under RA uh, 9282, any party adversely affected by the decision, ruling or inaction of the CIR, the Commissioner of Customs, the Secretary of Finance, the Secretary of Trade and Industry, or the Secretary of Agriculture or the Central Board of Assessment Appeals, or the RTC no? may file an appeal with the CTA within 30 days on receipt of such decision or ruling after the expiration of the appeal. You no? have this on the RA 92. Now, the appeal shall be made by filing a petition for review. No? So, procedural na ito. You have the provisions under Rule 42 of your 1997 Rules of Procedure. Then, you have also the application in case dalhin mo na siya sa NBank, Rule 43 on the uh, 1997 Rules of Procedure. 
or that's how the appeal should be made, filing a petition for review. Now, itong importante, no? Don't, please do not forget the MR requirement. No? Uh, of present, a lot of Supreme Court decisions have been made uh, where the Supreme Court has stressed the importance of filing an MR. No? So after the there is a judicial decision from the CTA. No? When the CTA division decides, bago ka mag sa M-Bank, mag-MR ka muna. When the CTA and bank decides, bago ka umakyat sa Supreme Court, mag-MR ka muna. So you have to file the motion for reconsideration. Now, while your case is pending with the CTA, no appeal taken to the CTA shall suspend the payment, levy, distraint, or sale of any property of the taxpayer for the satisfaction of his tax liability as provided. When in the opinion, however, of the court, the collection of the gov uh, by the aforementioned government agencies may jeopardize the interest of the government and or the taxpayer, the court at any stage of the proceedings may suspend the collection and require the taxpayer either to deposit the amount or file a surety bond for not more than double the amount. So yan yung cost. Uh, while pending with the CTA, collection proceedings may also be instituted. So you may ask for the suspension. Then the you may require to deposit an amount or file what we call a surety bond. Then the appeal to the Court of Tax Appeals and Bank. Now, no civil proceeding involving matters arising under the NIRC, the Tariff and Customs Code, or the Local Government Code shall be maintained until and unless an appeal has been previously filed with the CTA. This is important. Kasi you could not bring any action emanating from your remedies under the NIRC, from your remedies under the Tariff and Customs Code, from your remedies until... Uh, with the local government code when it will not pass with the CTA division. No? So, with the CTA. No? So, lahat yan tadaan with the CTA. So, before, in other words, before it goes to the end bank, no? except in cases where it should go directly to end bank, before it goes to the end bank, generally, it should first be lodged with the CTA division. From the CTA division, then it will now be brought to the CTA and bank. No? Again, except on cases where it should be brought directly to the end bank. So, lahat yan dadaan muna sa CTA division. Again, reminder, always file an MR or a motion for recon from receipt of the decision of the CTA, whether deciding the division or end bank, before bringing the decision for further review or appeal. Then finally, you bring it to the Supreme Court. Now, in bringing the decision to the Supreme Court, you have the decision of the CTA and bank. So the review that is brought to the Supreme Court will be governed by the rules on your Rule 45 of your Rules of Procedure. So this is by a petition for review on Section 9. A party adversely affected by the decision or ruling of the CTA and bank may file with the Supreme Court a verified petition for review on certiorari in accordance with Rule 45 of the Rules on Civil Procedure. So, yung kaso natin, umakyat na sa Supreme Court. Okay. So, collection. No? So, these are some uh, matters introduced by the RA-9282, the collection powers of the CTA, the institution of uh, collection remedies either by distraint or levy, you know, distraint on personal property or levy on real property. Okay. 
Okay, so ito yung dagdag, no? So we discuss initially the jurisdiction of the CPA, no? having exclusive appellate jurisdiction and original jurisdiction. Now, later jurisprudence evolved that the CPA has also what we call certiorari jurisdiction. That when there is an interlocutory order, no? an ancillary order before in a local tax case, in a local court, okay? the, and the party affected would like to question that ancillary or interlocutory order, the remedy there is to bring it on certiorari under Rule 65. Not because the appeal is not an available remedy. So the remedy of the taxpayer is to bring it under Rule 65 by way of special civil action on certiorari. Ang question ngayon, may, may certiorari jurisdiction na ba ang CTA? Yes. The CTA aside from those exclusive appellate and exclusive original, merong Rule 65 jurisdiction ang Court of Tax Appeals. You have interloc interlocutory court orders and tax cases, including tax-related cases. You have the case of C.E. Kaseknan Water versus the province of Nueva Ecija, decided by the Supreme Court in 2015. The court here ruled that the CTA, not the CA, no? the Court of Tax Appeals and not the Court of Appeals, has the power to rule on the petition for certiorari assailing an interlocutory order of the RTC relating to a local tax case. A certiorari petition questioning an interlocutory order issued in a local tax case falls under the jurisdiction of the CTA or the Court of Tax Appeals. So, plano na yan. No? Then, Prior to this decision, you have that ruling of the City of Manila versus the Honorable Grecia Cuerdo, decided in 2014, where in that local tax case uh, filed against the City of Manila, there was an order issued and then the parties would like to question that interlocutory order issued by the RTC in the local tax case. So ang question kasi nito, saan namin iaakyat yung interlocutory order of the RTC? Sa CA ba yan siya? Or sa, sa CTA? No? Supreme Court ruled that it should not be to the CA. It should be to the RTC, to the CTA. No? So in that case of City of Manila versus Judge Cuerdo, CTA has the jurisdiction to issue writs of certiorari or to determine whether there has been grave abuse of discretion amounting to lack or excess of jurisdiction on the part of the RTC in issuing an interlocutory order in cases falling with the CTA's exclusive appellate jurisdiction. Ano yung basis? The basis is found in Section 1, Article 8 of the 1987 Constitution. While there is no express grant of such power with respect to the CTA, no? Section 1, Article 8 of the 1987 Constitution provides that judicial power shall be vested in one Supreme Court and in such lower courts as may be established by law and that judicial power includes the duty of the courts, the courts of justice to settle actual controversies involving rights which are legally demandable and enforceable and to determine whether or not there has been a grave abuse of discretion amounting to lack or excess of jurisdiction on the part of any branch or instrumentality of the government. The CTA, therefore, by constitutional mandate, is vested with the jurisdiction to issue writs of certiorari in these cases. So that is settled. Okay. Then what about DOJ resolution on tax offenses? Kasi yung, yung 
yung judicial review nito is also brought on certiorari. So saan mo ba, let's say, nag-file sa DOJ ng tax uh, criminal action? So yung respondent, there was a finding of probable cause. No? So eh, gusto nilang iakyat no? to further uh, seek judicial review on the findings of the DOJ. Saan ba nila iakyat ito? No? Sa CA ba? In the case of Bureau of Customs versus Devanadera, decided in September 8, 2015, the court said, sa CTA na yan, hindi na yan pwede iakyat sa CA. So DOJ resolution on tax offenses should be appealed or brought on judicial review, not to the CA, but to the CTA. So the CA's original jurisdiction over a petition for certiorari assailing the DOJ resolution in a preliminary investigation involving tax and tariff offenses was necessarily transferred to the CTA pursuant to Section 7 of RA 9282. And such petition shall be governed by Rule 65 of the Rules of Court as amended. Accordingly, it is the CTA, not the CA, which has jurisdiction over the petition for certiorari assailing the DOJ resolution of dismissal of the BOC's complaint affidavit against private respondents for the violation of the Tariff and Customs Code of the Philippines. Klaro na yan, ha? Okay. A peculiar decision where the CTA is involved, no? which is not uh, clear no? under RA 9282. And it is connected with Section 19 of the FRIA, no? where you have corporations under corporate rehabilitation no? or receivership brought about by insolvency. No? So in Section 19 of the FRIA, you have their approbation of waiver of taxes and fees due to the national government and to the local government units. No? Because when, when, when the RTC acting as a commercial court, no? where you bring the action for the corporate rehabilitation, no? the one of the benefits when there is a state order, you have Section 19, waiver of taxes and fees due to the national government and the local government units. It says that upon issuance of the commencement order by the court and until the approval of the rehabilitation plan or dismissal of the petition, whichever is earlier, the imposition of all taxes and fees, including penalties, interests, and charges thereof due to the national government or to the, or to the LGUs no? shall be considered waived in furtherance of the objectives of the rehabilitation. Now, what if the BIR, your local government, will not honor that, will not give you a waiver? Ano ngayon ang remedy ng korporasyon? Si ayaw ng BIR. No, no, walang waiver. Magbabayad ka. No? Or the LGU will collect. You have to pay. No? So, where will you go? Should you go to the CA? Supreme Court said in the case of Steel Corporation versus BOC, no? decided in 2018, CTA has jurisdiction on all tax cases and matters related thereto even if the taxpayer is under corporate rehab. So the issue is whether a corporation claims under corporate rehabilitation can avail the benefits of Section 19 under RA 10142, which issue is cognizable by the RTC. No? Kasi doon mo man yan ipapile yung iyong uh, corporate rehabilitation and whose decision may be appealed to the CA or to the Supreme Court and not to any other court like the CTA, no? ordinarily. Pero since this now involves Section 19 of the FRIA, where taxes, where there involves now waiver of taxes and fees due to the national government or the, to the local government units, then 
the matter is not brought to the CA. It is brought to the CTA, to the Court of Tax Appeals, no? having exclusive appellate jurisdiction on the issue on the waiver of taxes under Section 19 of the PRIA, including asking for an injunctive relief. So you go to the CTA. So to recap, no? we capsule this case. No? What is very uh, tempting no? and very, uh, I call this, uh, significant of this decision is that this is spent by the 2020 Bar Chairman Justice Leonel. What is therefore now the extent of the CTA jurisdiction? Justice Leonin, the ponente in this case of BDO versus Republic of the Philippines et al. Um, outlined the jurisdiction and the extent of the jurisdiction of the CTA. And yang nilata gito, no? One by one. And the evolution that came out. At saka ano pa yung mga other jurisdiction of the CTA. So this it, it was the ponente in this case, and this was this this was decided and banked. No? The case of BDO versus Republic of the Philippines decided on August 16, 2016. So we will just sum up. No? So it says that section.